Hello and welcome to another Learn Learn Scratch tutorial. Uh, today's tutorial we're going to show you how to do snakes and ladders. So here we go, it's got a board, we're going to create our own board from scratch. We're also going to create our, I'm going to show you how to do create your own ladders and your own snakes uh, from scratch. Uh, and I'll show you how to create all the characters, well just, I'll just import these characters and move them about the board. Um, the, uh, the, this tutorial is quite long because the first 20 minutes or so is how to create the grid and how to create the snakes and how to create the ladders. If you're just interested in coding the game and not interested in um, in actually creating all the sprites, if you're not bothered about that, then just download um, from my website, download the background with the snakes and the ladders and you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to skip the first part. But the first part is interesting, there is a bit of coding in there. Um, so quick demo, let's have a look. So here's the board, we press start. Uh, when we press start, the players move along the board. There we go, this one's a four player game. And if you hit a, a ladder, then you go up the board. Uh, and there we go. We'll keep going through. And if you keep going through to the end, it displays a game over screen, a, a player one or player two or player three, whoever wins, it displays a player win screen. So let's get started. Okay, for the first thing we're going to do for our uh, Snakes and Ladders game is we're going to create the grid. So let's create a new project, a new Scratch project. Let's wait for that to load up. I did have a look online on Google to see what grids already existed and with snakes and stuff like that. But then I thought, well, while I've got Scratch, I might as well get it to do myself. So let's have a look. So what are we going to do? Well, in order to create a grid, we need to sort of start down here and draw lots and lots and lots of lines. Lines that go across. One, two, three, four, five, maybe six. I think if we go eight across by six up, that should probably do it, something like that. Uh, and then we need to do some lines up th for each one. So let's have a look. In order to do that, we can use the uh, the pen tool, because the pen's great, that draws lines. So we can use that and get the pen tool to draw us some lines. So let's have a go. Here we go. Um, when start clicked, we want to move scratch to the bottom left here when the start is clicked. So uh, let's go to, now if you look here at the coordinates, when I move my mouse, the bottom left, we're not going to go right to the edge because then you won't see the line, but about here, let's say minus, hmm, minus 230 and then minus 160, that might do it, let's have a look. Minus 230 and then minus 160. Minus 160. Now, if Scratch is already here, at the moment the pen will be up anyway, so it's okay. But I'll just move it up in, just in case, because that's pen up means lift it, like lift it off the paper, really. So we'll lift the pen off the paper. There we go. In fact, let's get rid of Scratch. Let's hide him. Uh, let's just delete him out of there. There we go. So we can't see him. Notice we've still got the sprite because we need to have uh, the pen up needs to move with a sprite. But the sprite's costume is blank, so we won't see Scratch moving. All we'll see is the pen drawing. So we want to start here, down the bottom left, and then the first thing we want to do is we want to go from here all the way over to here. So let's have a look. I'm going to draw a line across. So then what we want to do is we want to put our pen down, and let's draw a line across. Let's go to... Uh, it will be, in fact, we won't do that. Let's just change our X coordinate because at the moment the, our Y coordinate is going to stay the same anyway. So all we need to do is change our X coordinate from 0 over to, let's try plus 230. That might do it. 230, good. And hopefully, there you go. It draws a line from here right across to there. Brilliant. Sorted. So that's one line done. Now we could, if you wanted, duplicate this and do lots and lots and lots of code and just keep duplicating it and changing all these bits here. Um, but that's a lot of work. So what we really want to do here is let's just use a loop because uh, we're going to be repeating things. And let's have a look. There we go. Which bits are going to be repeated? These bits are going to be repeated. Pen down. Set X. We're not going to keep going back to the start there, but what we are going to do is each time round, we set the pen down, we go all the way over to here, 
Then what we need to do is let's go back. So let's go all the way back. So x to minus 230. And then let's lift the pen up and let's move up a little bit. So pen up. And then we can just move up a bit. Uh, and let's change the y. And we'll change the y by, no, I don't know. Let's try 50 first of all. Let's try 50. See what that looks like. And now... Uh, 10 times how many we need to repeat it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's try 6. Let's see what that does. Uh, there you go. Brilliant. Perfect. Perfect. Good. So, there we go. So, all our lines across now. 1, 2, 3. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Should we add one more? Yeah, let's add one more. Let's do repeat 7 times. There we go. Uh, hey, good. So that's all our lines across done. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. We've got six going up. And now all we need to do is do a similar thing for the going across. So this time we go back to the start. So we're back to here. Uh, let's have a look. We don't need to do it seven times. Probably going to be a few more, maybe nine. Uh, this time, uh, let's have a look. Pen down. We're not changing the x this time, but we're changing the y. So we're going to do a similar thing, change y. So let's go to 170, and then we'll go back to minus 170. Um, notice, as I'm doing this, because I'm repeating things, I don't just grab all these out straight away and take them all out. Um, what I tend to do, first of all, as I'm developing stuff, is I put them side by side before I move them in. Uh, and that way, change there we go. It's just easier for me to easier for me to do it. Uh, and let's just change x by 50. There we go. So now we've got the things we think it's about. Right, take those out. Keep those, put those in. There we go. Oh, let's pop in there. And then hopefully... Ah, put it. Get in there. Get in there. Let's have a look. So, uh, what have I done? Oh, that's what I've done. This is why... I didn't get rid of them straight away because I've made a slight mistake there. And it's not change Y by minus 107, it's set Y. So where's that gone? Here. I'm going, uh, 170 minus 170. So that again will go up to 170 and then back down to minus 170. So we do that one and then we do that one. Hey, that's better, isn't it? So now we're getting somewhere, somewhere nearer. Let's have a look. Uh, let's have a look. Good stuff. I've realised here that's minus 160, so that should be 160 minus 160. There we go. And the great thing about Scratch is you don't have to worry about making mistakes because all you got to do is um, all you got to do is just press it, and it'll and it'll do it. Let's have a look. Minus 160. There you go. Uh, nine times. Oh, it's going up, isn't it? So it doesn't need to be as many. Let's try five. Let's have a look. Oh. oh, right. Okay. Yeah. What I've done here is I'm not sure what's going wrong. And the reason I'm not sure what's going wrong is because what I need to do at the start of my program here is let's add a clear. So every time you click start, it clears all the existing pen. Otherwise, the existing pen stays there and you don't know what's happening. There you go. Now things are starting to look a little bit more sensible. That nine was right. Or it probably was right. There we go. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And do we need to? Yeah, that's okay. Good. So what's happening here is we're going across enough. We've got a good grid there. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, which is fine. Perfect. One, two, three, four, five, six. Good. We've got enough of a grid now, but we've just got these extra bits at the top. And the reason we've got the extra bits at the top here is because of these where it goes all the way to 230. We don't need it to go all the way over to 230. We don't need to go quite as much. Although, what I think I will do instead is maybe, instead of changing by 50, let's change them by 55 and make a slightly bigger grid. Ooh, there we go. We're almost there now, aren't we? Let's have a look. So, going across, it's still going uh, a little bit too far across. So, our X here... Let's try 215. That might work. Hey, 210 maybe. 210. And again, the grid, depending on the size of the grid that you want, you can do different values. It's entirely up to you. 
uh, and they're going up. We're a little bit short going up, so let's go to uh, where are we at? set Y to let's try 170 maybe. Hey, perfect. And there you go. That is a fully working grid. Now we could just leave the grid in the game there, and then obviously you can change it later. Um, but the best way to do it now is to use something like the snipping tool, if you've got the snipping tool. And what we'll do is new snip. We'll use the snipping tool here to create a JPEG or a PNG, I think it saves it as let's say that's a PNG. There we go. And there we go. And let's call this uh, grid. There we go. Good. There we are. And there we go. And now we've got that, what we can do is, in fact, we'll just save that as grid. And then we've got that for in future if we ever need to create a grid again. And let's just create a new a new Scratch program. And this is our actual one. Let's get rid of Scratch again. Goodbye, Scratch. And now what we can do is we can upload our grid as a backdrop. And it's solid. There we go. Perfect. Good. So all we need to do now is we need to add our numbers. So we click on the text tool and I'm going to pick a nice light color that, that blue there will do me. And all we have to do is add each of the numbers all the way along. Let's have a look. Uh, I tend to zoom in at this point because it makes it a bit easier. Just type in the color. Uh, there we go. Good. So literally type in the number you want, click off it, and then drag it to the correct position. It will take about five minutes to go all the way through uh, to do all of your numbers right the way through. So what I'll do is I'll pause the video now and I'll come back when I've uh, somewhere near finished. Okay, so there we go. I've just finished doing the last one. There we go, 1 to 48. Let's just check those. Uh, yeah, there we go. That looks good. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, the first time I did this, I did actually miss out number four and got to about here, um, <laughs> which is a bit silly. So do check as you're going through, because uh, otherwise it is a bit of a pain to fix it. But there we go. There's our nice and finished grid, and that's all sorted. Um, if you can't kind of avoid doing that grid, if you, if you uh, are not interested in doing all those numbers yourself, then uh, Feel free just to download the um, download the the the, uh, the actual bitmap image or whatever it is the JPEG image of of the grid. I'll put that available on the site anyway. So if you don't want to do it, you don't have to do all of it. So there's our grid. That's all sorted. Brilliant. There's a the start. There's the finish. So uh, I might want to colour my start and finish with slightly different colours. We do uh, let's start with an orange. There we go. Let's fill in the orange for the start. And we'll do a green for the finish to show it's that. That looks that's pretty cool, isn't it? Just make sure I do in between all those. There we go. And so there's a start, there's the finish, which is brilliant, perfect. That's the grid all finished. If you don't want to do it yourself, just download it. Otherwise, move on to the next video, the next part, which will look at creating the snakes and the ladders themselves. Okay, so let's create some snakes and some ladders. So each of our snake and uh, snakes and our ladders are going to be sprites, because that way we can move them about and choose how many we want. So what we need to do here is let's create a new sprite, paint a new sprite, and there's our costume, good. And what we're going to do is instead of using bitmap mode, which means that you paint little dots, little pixels on a grid, uh, what we're going to use is we're going to use vector mode. Vector art is brilliant uh, for doing anima uh, like animations or uh, logos or in this uh, little little cartoony images. It's perfect for it uh, because with vector, as you'll see in a bit, you can once you create a shape, you can use these tools here to drag it and alter the shape. Whereas with a bitmap, once it's drawn the shape, there's nothing you can do with it. So ve vectors are, are really really useful. So first thing we're going to do is we'll do the snake's head with a circle. So we click circle, I'll just use grey, you choose whatever colour you want. And let's do a little head, just like that. Perfect. And that's the head done. And now what we'll do is we'll use another circle for the tail, for the actual body of the snake. There we go. And let's move that up. Now you're probably saying, well that's a pretty rubbish looking snake, it doesn't look anything like a snake. It doesn't at the moment, but this is where the power of vectors come in. 
because now we can click on the reshape and if we click on our shape here what we can do is we can actually alter the shape of the snake itself so the snake shape of the body just by dragging these little dots so um, because we've used the circle tool it makes all the bits of the body quite rounded so there we go rather than doing ziggy zag uh, z like zigzag lines uh, like straight lines we can actually do quite rounded bits there we go so if we just do that there there's a snake um, uh, yeah, do that there feel free to um, to spend a bit more time on yours than I spend on mine I'm just going to do a nice simple one for the sake of the video there we go so there's a snake that's good uh, what we'll do is we'll just zoom in here let's get rid of click on oops there perfect there's our snake's head there's our body let's do let's just do a little bit of a tongue tiny little tongue there you go there's one there do a little bit of a fork there okay feel free to spend more time on yours than i do on mine i'll just give you some ideas on how to do it let's just delete that and we'll do some eyes as well in the snake's head there's one eye and to make sure he's got the same size eye there i used Control c Control v on mac it's whatever it is and, um, and there we go there's our snake with some eyes and now click on the color of the shit snake i'm gonna do a green snake with some white oh white eyes maybe there we go so there's my snake there's one of them uh, let's rename that snake. snake there we go good so there's my snake there we are and our first snake oops just realized I was, oh they go the right way yeah that's right isn't it they go to the head and they get eaten they come back down there they come out of uh, the bottom there so uh, there's one of my snakes let's right click on it let's duplicate the snake and let's add a few more snakes let's do a really mean one there so if you get to the top you'll think you're going to win and duplicate again add as many snakes as you feel let's add one there in fact this one here costumes uh, let's just zoom out on that one uh, there we go can we make him longer will that work yeah let's make him longer so he can go from there to there he's be a little bit longer about there good so there's my snakes i've got three snakes there okay add more as many snakes as you like to your game and I'll do it. Let's create a new sprite and let's add some ladders. And we'll just do it exactly the same way. Use vector mode. Um, I'm going to use circles for my. Oh, I don't want any white to this. Let's just do that. Let's have a brown ladder. Oh, no. What have I done? Oh, I've gone to bit that mode. I don't know how I did that. Uh, there we go. Nice brown. Ugh, that's a better brown, isn't it? There you go. One. Again, Control C, Control V to get the same size. About that, that's about right, isn't it? There, good. Yep, yeah, that'll do. And then we'll do circles again. You don't have to use circles on this. Oh, actually, no, I'll use lines on this one, maybe. Let's zoom in. Let's draw some lines. Or a square. Should we do square or lines? Try with lines. Should work, hopefully. Now, here's a tip. Notice how here, no matter where I move, it still only goes either left or right and up and down. That's because I'm holding on to the shift key uh, as I do this. So hold to shift and then I can draw the rungs on the ladder. Two, three, oops, four, it's just sticking out a bit, so let's do that one a bit better. There we go, four. Again, take as much time as you want on yours. I'm doing it a bit quicker because of the video. There we go. Oops. Let's do one last one there. There we go. There's a nice ladder. And we'll just, oops. Let's colour that in. Oh, well, let me do the rungs. Oh, that's a shame. Do, do, do. There we go. In that case, what we'll do here then is... 
Let's just delete those, delete those, delete those. That's my bad. I should have uh, realized that before. This is one of the problems with vector mode is that this is in vector. Uh, it'll only fill solid shapes in vector mode, whereas a bitmap, it will fill, um, it'll fill it, it'll look at it and, f and fill between the dots. So what I'll have to use there instead of using the line tool, which I should have done in the first place, is used the square tool. There we go. There we go. Just use the square tool. In fact, actually, it's much quicker and easier anyway, so I don't know why I did it the other way. Just going a little bit mad. There we go. There, that's better. And now, because we use the square tool rather than the line tool, we should be able to just fill in our books. What I will do, though, is I'm not going to do it the same colour brown. It looks a bit boring. Let's colour it in. We'll do it that way. We'll do those colour brown instead. Yay, that's better, isn't it? Good. Um, good. Really, let's just zoom out a bit. Uh, like that. A little bit wide though, so let's just select all of it. And let's just make it a bit thinner. That's better. Much better. Good. So what we can add now is let's add a few let's add a few ladders in there. Good, that's one. Duplicate. Let's do another one up here. Duplicate. And let's do one down here. But we're going to make it a smaller ladder for that one. Um, one, one, one. We'll put it there. So we're going to make it smaller. Oops. We just done there. That one costume. So what we'll do there. Let's just select all that. Can we delete those ones? Just delete those. And delete the top rungs. And then just make the actual ladder itself a bit smaller. There we go, perfect. Do, 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 do. Again, you can add more or less ladders, uh, more or less snakes as well, depending on what you want. But we've now got a nice, uh, a nice snakes and ladders board ready for to start coding. Okay, so now we've programmed the board, we created all the board, we create the snakes and the ladders. Now we need to add a player and get the mechanics of moving the player around the board. So first of all, let's just add a, uh, let's just use the bear. You can use whatever character you want. There we go. And let's put him on his start position. There we are. So let's make him a bit smaller. There we go. And let's put him in the start there. Maybe make him a little bit smaller. He's still a little bit big. There we go. So there's our player one. And he's on the board and he's ready to start. So he's in the right place. So what we might as well do here is just say when start clicked, because we're talking about this bear, let's move him uh, to that first position. Let's go to here and we'll go to those coordinates. You'll notice here that as I move the player, as I, so if I'm not there, if you notice here, as I move the player here, these values change automatically. Uh, to where he is in his X and his Y coordinates. The X and the Y coordinates work just like in maths. Uh, they start in the center, 0, 0 is about here, and then it goes up to 240X uh, minus 240X, and then the Y axis, I think it's minus 180, and then plus 180. But we'll, you don't have to worry about that too much for the moment. Now let's just move him to the center, there we go. And we'll do that go to. So whenever you press start, He'll go to the start. Perfect. Good. So once we got him to the start, what do we need to do now? Well, here, if we look at the board, as we're walking through the board, as if we were just going there, ignoring the snakes and the ladders for the moment, it kind of goes in a little S fashion here. So it goes one, two, three, all the way across up to there. Uh, and there's lots of different ways you could do this. But the way we're going to do it, the way I'm going to do it, is uh, I'm going to use a list to keep track of where he is. Because depending on which position you're in, uh, for instance here, if you're 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, then you're going to move to the right. But if you're on position 8, you're going to move up. And if you're going to be on position 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, you're going to move left. So how do we do that? The easiest way to do is let's just create a list of all of those values and whether you're going to the right or whether you're going up or whether you're going to the left. So here we go. Let's first of all let's click on data. And let's create a list, and let's call this the uh, 
directions. There you go, because it's what direction you're going to be moving in. Now, I could do this add there and just do the first one and put like right, there you go. Uh, and then I could do that seven times and then put up and then do it another seven times and then put uh, left and etc, etc, etc. I could do all that manually. Um, but the easiest way to do it really is to use a loop. So what have we got? Well, the first seven times we go to the right. So repeat seven times. We go to the right. Good. Add thing right direction. Oh, notice as well that here, what I do is I delete all at the very start. I delete everything out of directions. The reason being that if you click start twice and if you haven't got that, it will just keep adding more and more to your directions list, which you probably don't want. So let's have a look. So seven times we go to the add right to the directions. Uh, then we add uh, up because we're going to go up because we're on number eight. That goes up. And then another seven times here, just get rid of that one there, we go to the left. There we go. So that will get us all the way to there. And then we add another up. Insert thing, uh, add thing to directions, up. There we go. So there we go, right, up. So we go right, and then up, then left, and then up. There we go. Now again, I could do that however many times, it'd be like six lots of blocks, but we don't have to do that because what we can do here, this is known as a nested loop, is really it's this whole process of there to there. There you go. It needs to be repeated one, so two, three times. So this bit of it here needs to be repeated three times. So we go like that. There we go. Repeat three times. And there we go, seven times. So now, hopefully, if I press start, there we go. So 48 items in our list, which is correct, 48 items. And it should go right, 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 yep. And then up, good. And then it should go left, 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 up, yeah, perfect. There it is. So now we've got our directions to move in right or up or left. Perfect, good. That's a nice, easy way of doing it. So let's just test that out. When we press start, we'll go to there. And now what we'll do is we'll just test this. We're going to change this in a bit, but we use this as a tester. Let's start the bear. When we press space, let's get him to walk the entire board. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to have to repeat 47 times. There we go, 47 times. And uh, what we need to do is we need to keep track of uh, the bear's current position. So for this sprite only, because it's the bear's position, let's call it his position on the board. So his bear position, and he starts on number one. So set his, at the start of the game, set his position to one. There you go. And then 47 times, what we do now is we say, we need a couple of if statements. Well, we need three if statements. One for, one for right, one for left, and one for up. So what we do now is we say... There we go. I'm doing equals. And we want to say, first of all, if the, and this is the clever bit, we get the position. So the variable is going to keep track of what his position is. So like, for instance, here his position is seven. So if we go item position, which would be seven of the list, if it, and we go to this list, and whatever position he's at on the list, uh, on the board, we get the corresponding value from the list. So if the item position equals left, there we go. So if the position of directions, there we go. So if that item of the directions is left, we need to move. So for instance, when he's here, we need to change his X value by minus 55. There we go. So if his position of directions is left, we change it by minus 55. But actually, if we duplicate that, rather than putting all three of those in, there we go. Uh, there we go. Good. So if he's, if he's going left, he goes minus 55. If uh, We change it by minus 55. If he goes right, then we need to change it by plus 55, which of course will move in that way. And then if his direction is up, we need to change, well, we don't change the x value because we're not making it go across, but we're changing the y value. And again, by 55. Now this 55 comes from at the start, if you remember when we were doing the board, each time we moved the uh, the line for the pen, 
by 55. So that should be the same amount. There we go. So when start space pressed, repeat. If the item position of is left, then change it by minus 55. If it's right, then change it by 55. And if it's uh, up, then change the Y position by 55. All we need to do now is after you've moved, you set the position, or not set it, sorry, change the position by one. So that each time round, the player's position will change by one and you'll move, hopefully, move across. What I'll also do as well is I'll just put a bit of a weight in there. Let's put a third of a second weight in between each, each loop just to check that it's uh, it's working okay. So let's have a look. We press start, it creates our list. We press space and hopefully, there we go. Yay, brilliant, perfect. We press start again, we'll move back to the start. Perfect. So, there you go, when space bus pressed, that's good. Okay, now that's good, but we don't want it to move, always move at the same amount, do we? We want it to move different amounts depending on the dice roll. So, how are we going to do a dice roll? Well, let's have a look. What we'll do here is, let's create a new sprite. And wonder, do we have a dice in here? I don't think we do have a dice, do we? No, there's no dice. We'll have to create our own dice. So let's add a new, let's create a new sprite. And we're going to create a dice sprite. So a square. Let's do a nice square. There we go. And should we do it in vector mode? Yeah, let's do a vector mode square. And be black with white. Let's have a look. So now. Uh, here's another tip as well. If you're doing a uh, if you're doing a dice sort of shape, then at the moment it might be quite hard to get a, a perfect square. So what we'll do is hold on to shift as you're doing it, and it'll force it into a square sort of shape. There we go. Perfect. And let's just do a circle in there. Again, hold shift while you're doing the circle and make sure you get a perfect circle. There we go. What we'll do is there. There we go. Brilliant. And we'll click there. Make sure that set the uh, set it to the center. There you go. So there's our dice. And what we we'll need to do here is let's just color it in, and we'll color the center of that dot oh, in black. There you go. So there's one. Duplicate. And what we could do here now we've duplicated it is there's one. Let's just click that. Copy. We'll just move these out. There's two. Duplicate. That out there. Copy, Control C, Control V to paste. Put another one. There's three. Duplicate. Move him there. Paste. Four. Duplicate. There we go. Do, 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 do. Paste another one there. There's five. Duplicate. And we'll just move these up now. There we go. There we go. Pasting up on there. There we go. Good. So there's our dice. There's our dice. And our dice has got one, two, three, four, five, Six. There you go. Now it, you've got to rename them one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'll show you why in a second. Because then what we can do is this: we can say, okay, when space bar pressed, there we go. When space bar pressed, what we'll do here is uh, repeat. There we go. There we go. And we'll repeat. Let's do this 20 times, because that gives us lots of spinning dice numbers. Uh, repeat 20 times. And what we do is we set the, oh, let's make a variable, call it dice roll, because we want to know what the dice roll was. So what we do now is 20 times we set the dice roll to, and we set it to a random number from 1 to 6. Good stuff. And here's the clever thing, is now what we do is we switch the costume to 
and then whatever the dice roll was. There we go. There we go. Do, 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 do. Just change this from spacebar to uh, A. There you go. Oh, no, actually, I know what we'll do. When the sprite clicked. So whenever you click the sprite, it'll roll the dice. That'll do, won't it? So whenever this sprite is clicked, 20 times, set the dice roll to some number between 0 and 6. 6 will cost you to that number. And then we'll just wait. Uh, let's do 0 0.1. 0 0.1 seconds. There you go. So hopefully. There we go. There we go. Every time we click it, it goes through random numbers and then stops on the dice roll number, or whatever it is. So, saw it. Good. Excellent. So, what we can do now is we'll say, there we go, we'll put this out of the way somewhere. Just out of the way there. There we go. There we go. If I'll put it up there. So, what we're going to do is, whenever the dice is rolled, at the moment we edit for when the sprites click, but we won't do that. Um, when the dice is rolled, we're going to do that repeat, uh, and then we're going to set it to whatever that is. Now, what we'll do here is, there we go. Let's show it, because most of the time we probably want to hide it, and let's just press space. So the idea being is, when we press space, the dice appear, they roll, set it to the right number. We wait for a few seconds while it moves. Let's wait for like five seconds or something, and then we'll hide it again. Let's have a look. Nice height. So, what we're going to use to do this is we'll use a, um, a broadcast message. And broadcast messages are brilliant because you just set them up uh, and you say, whenever I receive whatever the name of the message is, then do something. So, this is going to be roll the dice. So, whenever we receive the message roll the dice, then it's going to go through all of this and then we're going to do something else. And there we go. So, when I receive the message, roll the dice, there we are, then we'll show, roll the dice, and then we'll hide again. So let's look, see if I click that now, there you go, rolls the dice, lands on six, one, two, three, four, five, and then it disappears. Perfect, and if I click it again, it should do exactly the same. Good. So when I receive roll the dice, there we go, wait, 0 0.1. In fact, we'll just change that to 10 times. And the reason we'll do it is this. A, it's a bit quicker, because it'll only do it for one second, and then it'll wait five seconds. But also, is now we know that this part of the process here will take 0 0.1 seconds times by 10. So the whole, this part of the process, will take a maximum of one second. Which means that what we can do here is this. When I receive roll the dice, and when I receive roll the dice, instead of repeating 47 times, because that'll take us all the way up the board, what we do instead is we'll wait, uh, we'll wait two seconds, which gives it time for the dice to roll. And then here, instead of repeating 47 times, we'll repeat whatever the dice roll number of times is. So if it, if it rolls a six, then you're going to move six. If it rolls a one, you're going to move a one. Let's have a look. Let's see if that's a look. Press start. Uh, when I receive roll the dice, what should we do for roll the dice? Let's say uh, on the stage. In fact, let's do. In fact, we'll put it here on the. Uh, uh, not when this spike is clicked. Uh, when space bar is pressed. There we go. When space bar is pressed, roll the dice. There we go. So let's try that. So we roll the dice, it lands on a 6, and it moves a 6. Roll the dice again, it lands on a 1, moves 1. Roll the dice again, it lands on a 6. It moves 6. Perfect. So that's all working perfectly. So what we'll do is we'll hide the dice roll and we'll hide the directions. Uh, and we'll hide his position for the moment, because we don't need that. And we'll put him back to the start. Good, so we're almost, we're getting there quite quickly already. So what we've got to do now? Well. We've got the uh, dice roll sorted. What we need to do now is we need to say, okay, when we land on either a, a ladder or a snake, then we need to move or do something. Now, the easiest way to do this is just to use a series of if statements after you've moved. Because if you look here, you do all of the moving, 
and you only want to go up a ladder or down a snake after you've finished moving. So something needs to go on the bottom of this script. So what we do here now is we say, okay, if then what? Well, what we can do is we can look at our position. And we can use our position at the end because we changed our position to whatever it is. So we can say if our position, let's have a look. We can add that. And we just need one of each for each one. If our position equals five, then we're going to move up. We're going to glide up to there. There we go. So how do we do that? One, two, three. What we do here is... Uh, move that to there. And what we'll do is we'll just glide to wherever it is that we need it. Excellent. And we'll set our new position to 28. Set position to 28. There you go. And that's it. That's as hard as it gets. So, but we'll have one if statement for each one of them. If position equals five, if position equals uh, 17, that should be. Not seven, it looks like seven from there. Uh, and if it's 17, then let's move him to there. Let's glide him to get rid of that, because I need another glide. Glide up to there, to that position. Set the position to 33. There's that one. Let's just do another one. If position equals 24. There we go. Glide to there. <coughs> to there. Set position to 41. Good. So there's the three. There's the three ladders. And then we'll just do the same for the snake. If position equals 26, then we'll just glide. But this time we're going to glide down. So there. <clears throat> Set the position to 10. Uh, duplicates. 36. If position equals 36. And get those, glide, oops, glide to there, set the position to one, and oh, four, and then the last one, there we go, if position equals 47, then glide one second, so leave that there. Guide him to there, let's put him back there, and set his position to 21. There we go, good. So hopefully now, let's have a look, roll the dice, here's one, let's see if this is where we don't land on anything, there we go, let's see if we can get where we need to go, four, There we go, perfect. And he should now keep going where he's supposed to be going. Hey, there you go. Good, excellent. So now you'll notice we've got all the way up to number 48. There we are. So. What we could say now is if he gets to 48, then uh, we need to broadcast who the winner is. So let's do variable name, the winner, uh, if, there we go, if my position equals, in fact we'll just duplicate that, that as well, if my position equals 48, there we go, get rid of all that, then we're just going to set the winner to... Set the winner to player one, so just put one. And then what we'll do is we'll broadcast game over. Game over. There we go. Brilliant. Now we're not going to do anything with the game over just yet. Uh, we'll do it later on, but you'll probably put like a game over screen and it says like player one wins or player two wins. But that'll do for the moment. So we just literally 
set your station to 48 and broadcast game over. Good. Brilliant. Uh, that's okay. In fact, thinking about it later on, if we're going to hide the board and all the bits on it, then it means that surely at the start of it, we're going to have to show him as well. So we'll make sure we show him because presumably later we're going to hide the bear because we're going to say game over or player one wins or something. There we go. So there's our bear. So that's good. Now, at the moment, the problem we've got is if we add another sprite, then whenever I click space, all the sprites are going to move by that amount. We don't want that. We only want bear. Uh, let's, let's call this player one. In the first, just change him to player one. We only want player one to move on player one's go. So how do we keep control of that? Well, obviously, if um, at the start of the game, we, we need to say whose turn it is. So may, uh, uh, player turn, player turn. So create another variable, call it player turn, and set the player to one, because we're going to start on player one. Uh, there we go. There we go. And whenever I receive the doll, roll the dice, what we can say now is we can say if there we go if the player turn equals one then we do all this stuff there you go so now it'll only it will only do that if it's actually player one's turn which is brilliant so now if I duplicate it oh actually which is okay but what we also need to do here is if it is that player's turn uh, if player turn, there you go. If player turn equals one, then obviously at the end of here, if it's player one's turn, then after all this, after you've moved the position, set the player turn to two. There we go. So if his player turns one, then it will do all this and set the player to turn to two. So now if we duplicate it, so we're just duplicating that sprite that changes. Uh, let's just paint him a different colour so we can keep track of that. Let's just put him as a green one. Oh, no, I don't like green. It's going to be orange. There we go. There's an orange bear. So there's player one, there's player two. And now what we can say is if we're just going to have a two player game, if the player turn equals two, then do that. Uh, it set the winner to player two. And if we're, we're just going to keep it with two players at the moment. So set player two, player turn to player one. There we go. So now, hopefully, let's have a look. We move two. Oh, what happened there? Let's try again. Do. Ooh. Why is it doing that? Doing something slightly wrong here. Let's have a look. So play turn. So play turn equals one. Have I? Oh, that's why. If you notice there, I've just changed. I've actually just changed them around slightly. There you go. So that's player one. Oops, I messed all this up. Let's just call that player one. He's player one. And he's player two. Player two. That's right, isn't it? Look, player one. Yep. Player two. I must have just clicked the wrong one. Let's have a quick look. So let's try again. Press space bar. Player one moves four. Oh, and he's up there. Play two, got to six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Good. There we go. Five. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. And he moves up. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Yeah, got to six. One, two, three. Whoa. Excellent. So that looks like it's working well there. What I have noticed as well is that here, if his position is 48, we broadcast winner, which is okay. Broadcast game over. What we also want to do as well is stop this script because we don't want him moving anymore if he gets to number 48. So we'll just say, okay, if we, uh, does that stop there? If we are the winner, then we'll just stop this script as well. So, because uh, then that way it, it won't keep trying to move up past 48. So let's have a look. Let's try that again. Good stuff. Let's have a quick look. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. One, two. One, two. So that's moving perfectly. That's brilliant. That's moving all okay. There you go. And we press space. And we move up the board. We're going up and down, which is okay. So that's all done. All we need to do now is, um, is, is do the winner, the game over screen. So let's do that now, shall we? Let's have a look. So that's the grid. So we need to do another screen here. 
that's going to be the game over. Let's have a look. Here we go. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, and the way we'll do that actually is we'll change the backdrop to a blank backdrop, maybe with a bit of a um, bit of a gradient. Not orange to that though. There we go. There you go. So a bit of a gradient, and we'll just put the winner is or player whatever it is player something wins. There we go. So how are we going to do that? Well, what we'll do is. Here we go. We need to create a new sprite, and this time we're going to use some of the inbuilt things, letters, and we're going to use. There we go. There we are. Let's use the orange ones because I like those. So we're going to need a P. There we are, P. And what we'll do now, if you, here's a good trick there, we've got the P. So what we need now is, let's get another costume. We'll add all the other letters that we need. So P, next one, L. There we go, P, L, letters, A, duplicates, oh no, uh, letters, L, A, Y, Duplicate. E. R. Player. Good stuff. And then one. Let's keep adding more letters. W. Don't worry, it's going to tidy this up in a bit. I know it looks a bit horrible at the moment, but we'll get this figured out. I. M. S. Player 1 wins. So what we can do now is click on the P of player 1. Uh, let's just move it over to the top left there a bit. Is that okay? No, that's gone. Let's just seem to have hit it for some reason. But where, where the P's gone, we'll bring it back in a second. And what we do now is we drag the other letters here onto A, E, R, there we go, play it. Maybe it's this thing here. Like that. Oh, there it is. It's starting to appear now. That's good. It seems to have appeared, just disappeared up there a bit. Let's move him in there. So, player. And here we go. O. N. E. W. I. N. S. There you go, player one wins. There we go, player one wins. Good. So now we've got player one wins. What we can do is we'll duplicate that for player two and duplicate it for player three. Duplicate, duplicate. Obviously, with player two, we'll need the O for two, but we don't need the E. We need it. Oops. We need the W in there as well. And we've we got a T. No, we've got a T so far, but let's add a T. T, 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 there it is. There we go. Player two wins. Good, so let's play two wins done. And then let's get rid of that. Uh, delete, delete, leave that plus there. Uh, leave that in there. T, I've got the T now. T, got an R somewhere. Yep. And then we just need a H. H. There we go. 
And let's drag that into there. There you go, let's play three. Oh, we need play four as well. Okay, in that case, don't need that, don't need that, don't need that, don't need that. Uh, no F, got an O. Uh, I need a U and an F. F. And U. There we go, player four wins, there you go. So, what we'll do now is get rid of the extra bits that we don't need, all these letters that we no longer need. Get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that. Good. And what we'll do now is we'll use a similar trick that we did on the dice. Rename the costumes one, two, three, four. Good stuff. One, two, three, four. And now all we need to do is we can take advantage of the winner there. So what we can say is at the start of the game, let's hide this. Let's just hide that. There we go. Hide. And now what we need to do is if we say when I receive game over, change the costume to and then whoever the winner is. And that hopefully should then switch through to the correct costume. Let's find out. Oh, so also what we need to do here is, now we've changed everything, obviously on the game over screen, we're gonna to need to hide all of these sprites. Uh, and at the start of the game, we need to switch back to, there we go, we need to switch back to the other backdrop. So it needs to be switched to that at the start of the game, and this uh, needs to switch to this backdrop when we receive. So when I receive game over, set the back backdrop to backdrop one, which is let's just change that to game over. Game over. There we go. When I receive game over, switch backdrop to game over. Uh, when we start the game, switch the backdrop to the grid. And then for each of these sprites here, when I receive game over, uh, when I receive game over, uh, you're going to need to hide because we don't want to see them when you receive game over. But when the game starts, you need to show them. There we go. Now I could redo all those scripts on each one of these players here, but I'll just cheat and I'll just drag that there, drag that there, drag that there, drag that there. Drag that there, that there, 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 there. So hopefully when we press start, they all appear, which is great. Perfect. Let's just hide those two bits there. There we go. The dice, yeah, we want it to show, oh, do we? No, we want to hide that, don't we? So the dice wants to hide at the start of the game. I'll just hide that then. There we go. Yes, that's perfect. And then we press spacebar, it shows. And then they move across, which is good. Now, let's have a quick look. Here we go. Play one, play two. Uh, did I set that properly there when I broadcast game over? There we go. Uh, stop scripts. Okay, so we need to say with this one here, we say when I receive, uh, when I receive game over, we need to hide. So, in fact, I can just drag that from here, can't I? When I receive game over, hide. There we go. Done. That should be, that should be fine. Let's just test that with two players. If it works with two players, then we'll change the player turn. Uh, we can change these bits here to make it compatible for players. Let's have a look. So, start, let's have a go. So, player two, uh, one moves. Player two moves, up he goes. Oh, and two. And 
one. Oh. One, two, three. So if, if the orange wins, it should say player one wins. Let's have a look. Two, three, four. Oh, well, we're almost there. So what's gone wrong here? Oh, when I receive game over, switch the costume to the winner. But of course, you need to show it as well. There you go. And it does say player one wins. That's it. Brilliant. So all we need to do now is let's just duplicate this here. Duplicate that's going to be player three, which it's done. It's already realized that. If player turn equals three, and do that. If the uh, if we get to there, then set the winner to player three. Otherwise, set it to player four. Good. Also, that needs to be set to player from player two. They need to change it to player three, and then duplicate that. And same thing. Uh, if player turn equals four, then do all that. Set the winner to player four, otherwise set the player turn to player one. Good, so let's have a look. Orange, good enough. Let's change these costumes to something a bit different. Oops, let's go with blue. Oh, that's quite nice with the gradient. That's quite cool. I want to do that with yours. Uh, pink. There we go. And green. There you go. Brilliant. Let's have a look. Let's, let's find out if it works. So it should be orange first. One, two, three, four, five. Then blue. Then pink. There we go. Two, three, four, five, six. Oh, oh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Oh. We've got a slight glitch here. By the looks, it's only moving at one. One, two, three. Oh, it's only moving three. One. Ah. Uh -huh. Okay, I think what's happening here is moving the correct amount. Uh, a slight glitch here, I've just noticed, we'll have to change this. Uh, what's happening here is it's doing this dice roll and it's moving it really, really quickly. So I don't think I'm getting a chance to see that it's moving the right amount. Let's just have a quick look. One. That moves one, two, yeah, that's okay. Five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Four. One, two, three, four. Oh yeah, it's moving the right amount. One, two, three. Yeah, it is moving the right amount. Four did it wrong there. Three. There you go. Player one wins. So that's working fine, and that's all done. Um, so improvements to it. Um, you could do a start screen. Uh, you can get a display at the top corner whose turn it is when you're doing the roll or at the start of the thing. So it uh, flashes up as it's player one's, played one's turn, player two's turn. Um, sound effects whilst they're moving, that would be really, really useful. So every time the dice rolls, you could do like a dice roll sound. Um, maybe some background music. All sorts of improvements you could do to it. I don't want to give you all. Um, but there you go. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, subscribe if you like them um, on the YouTube channel. And if you've got any requests for any tutorials, just give me a shout. Thank you.